Hey everybody, it's Eugene. And today what I'm going to be doing is answering a question that comes up quite frequently. And that is for people who may be new to Recon 3D or new to Apple. And that is whether or not you want to buy an iPhone or an iPad for scanning with Recon 3D. So we're going to get right into it here. And we're going to start off with why people might be asking this question. Well, the first one is that you may have somebody which is absolutely brand new to the whole Apple ecosystem. So there are a lot of people out there that are using Samsung, Android, and they're quite happy with what they have. And now they see that they can scan with Recon 3D. So they're going to be making the flip over. So new device, new uh, tech, and they want to know what device is going to be best for them. The other kind of person might be a person with a phone who that is already an Apple phone. Maybe it's an older Apple phone. Maybe it's not one of the models that have LiDAR inside of it. So they want to know what they should be upgrading to. Um, you know, maybe they just want to get an iPad instead of an iPhone. So uh, there's that situation too. The other one is that there are people that currently have a single phone and what they want to do is have a second phone. So they don't want to switch over their phone or anything like that. They want to stick with their phone, but they want to buy a second phone. Some people actually are just buying the phone only for the scanning. It's not going to replace their current phone. And so those are a number of situations that people may find themselves in. So let's ask the question, what devices does Recon 3D work on? Well, right now it's December 2022, and there are three types of phones that Recon 3D will work on. And all of them have to have the LiDAR sensor. So the iPhone 12, 13, and 14 Pro and Pro Max models. It has to be the Pro and Pro Max. If it's just a regular iPhone 12, 13, or 14, it will not have the LiDAR. And how do you know that? Well, if you look at the sensor, there's a little black dot that's right there. Okay, so that is the LiDAR sensor. And if it has that, then you're good to go. But again, if it's the Pro or Pro Max models, you're okay. The Pro model itself is a little bit smaller in size on this phone and the max is this one here okay so this is the iphone 13 pro max so it's the largest form factor you can get pretty much in the uh, in the iphone the iphone 14 would be very similar now when it comes to the ipad the ipad pros since 2020 have had the lidar sensor and it's actually here as well so if you look at the back uh, it's a little hard to see here but there's actually a little uh, black dot there as well. But um, if it's an iPad Pro, you can always check it in the specs. It'll have the LiDAR sensor. And if you have any of those devices, that's where you can use Recon 3D for scanning. Now, if we talk about technical differences between these devices, one thing for sure is that the LiDAR sensor appears to be identical in all of them. And in a previous video, what I did was a comparison between the iPad Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And I put them side by side uh, with the sensor about the same distance from a wall. And then I projected the pattern. And the pattern is the same. Same size. It looks like it's the same shape and everything else. So that being the case, you're, there's no LiDAR advantage to having one device or the other. The sensor seems to be identical. Now, on the other side, the differences are sort of, um, how can I say this? You can get the same result, but maybe the experience that you have with the device may be a little bit better. Okay, so if we look at something like the iPhone 12, uh, that has Apple's uh, A14 uh, chipset in there. It's the Bionic chipset. Um, if you're using the iPhone 13, uh, that one has a little bit upgraded chipset and the uh, iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max have the new, it's an A16 Bionic chip. So the chip keeps kind of increasing or getting better and faster. And so that's good. Um, you get some improvements there. However, when it comes to Recon 3D, if you're going to be uploading your scans to the server, the 12, 13, or 14 Pro or Pro Max won't really make a difference for you. It's not going to do a whole heck of a lot. And the same goes with the iPad Pro. Um, you know, this has a much better uh, chip on it. So I believe it's the uh, the M1, but 
Nonetheless, unless you're processing on the device, that's maybe where you're going to see a little bit of a difference. Now, there are some limitations with on-device processing right now. So that being the case, you're always better off putting it onto the server. Um, in the future, uh, we may be able to, take, to leverage or have better processing on the device. So um, you will get some improvements with an iPad because it's got a little bit more horsepower. And uh, the same you could say for the 14, 13, and 12, um, you know, 14 having the strong chip if you're going to be doing something on the device. There are some other things and um, one of them has to do with the camera. And so the iPhone 14 has come with a much better camera. It's got a, a 48 megapixel uh, sensor. It's larger than the others. So if you were just doing photogrammetry and photogrammetry is one of the modes that we have inside of Recon 3D, then that might be something that would want you to upgrade to, you know, having a, a better camera on your phone, but certainly it will still work with the 13 and the 12. But like I said, you may want to have a, a better video uh, on the 14 as opposed to the uh, iPhone 12. So um, those types of things may be useful for other things that you're doing if you want better photos um, and possibly for photogrammetry. Now the iPad uh, Pro is more than just a phone, right? So um, you can get it with data, you can get it with Wi-Fi, but you can work with it. So I have a keyboard with this. And so, you know, I can use my iPad for work, for emails and for other things. Now that doesn't make a big contribution to Recon 3D, but it may make the difference for you investing in the additional money for using the iPad. So if it's gonna be like a little laptop for you or something you're gonna travel with and use, then great, you got it. Um, it does other things, it's a fairly powerful uh, tablet or, or you know the iPad will do video uh, um, editing and there's programs that do photo editing and other things so some of the other advantages between choosing a phone and the iPad may not be you know with respect to um, scanning or LiDAR scanning they may have you know maybe you want to take pictures with this or you want to take notes in the field with the pen and so that may be where this is more useful. When it comes to size, we know that there's a big difference between this and this. And so what does that size do for you? Well, first off, um, something like this is going to be really small and you can operate it with one hand. So if you need to get into tight spots, let's say you're on the uh, in a small closet space or let's say you're inside of uh, an, an interior of a car or something like that you know having a small phone like this is pretty easy to manipulate you can kind of move around pretty easy and get into the spaces that you need now if you try to do the same thing with this although it's you know you could do it with one hand i don't know just something about it doesn't feel natural it seems like you always have to have you know two hands on the device so you know, you may want to, you know, go with two hands. Uh, now it is somewhat more stable with two hands on the iPad. You can use it with one. It's a little tricky. Um, you know, it's a lot of money to be holding in your hand. You're, you know, kind of afraid to drop it. Now, on each of these devices, I do have a rugged case. I don't have it on this one right now. It's just a simple case. But on this one here, I've taken it out because I have a keyboard for it. But I have a ruggedized case with, it's got rubber and everything else. So in case it, um, you know, drops or whatever, it doesn't crack or anything. The other thing about the case is that it also has a strap on the back. So you can put it in your hand and then you can, uh, you know, hold it with one hand uh, for scanning and that sort of thing. So that's that's useful too. But the other consideration too is, especially for those people that are going to be using it for areas that you want to get on top of. So maybe it's on top of a big truck, maybe it's on the you know upper level of a, of a wall or something like that. You're probably going to want to mount these on a uh, adapter and a pole. Now, if you do that, well, it's obviously going to be a big difference between mounting this and mounting this here. Now, it's not that it's impossible. It certainly is possible, but you have to take some other things into consideration. So uh, this is just like a little setup that I have for my phone. And you can see that it's it's pretty easy to do. I can set it up in here pretty quick and, you know, extend this. And it doesn't feel uncomfortable having this phone, you know, fully extended, uh, you know, two, three meters, four feet, eight feet, depending on the pole they have. I mean, you could have it as high as, you know, four or five meters up in the air and it's no big deal. So, you know, this feels a little bit more comfortable than, you know, putting your iPad up on a pole. 
Now there are brackets and things like that that you can get for the iPad. In fact, I have one here that I use. Um, this is one, it's got a metal bracket on it and you can, you know, fasten it onto a pole and then basically you can adjust. There's a ball mount here and move it around. Now this is plastic. Um, I wasn't, when I bought this, I wasn't actually thinking about using it for putting the iPad up in the air. This is more to mount on the pole so that I can control something with it. So like if I had a camera up top, I can control a camera. But um, there are versions of this which were, are much more rugged. And this is something you need to take into consideration. I know there are people doing this. Um, I don't feel as comfortable with putting this on a pole and then putting it up high. You can, of course. Uh, you know, it's not a problem. But... Um, Again, it just matters if you're comfortable with it or not. So the bottom line is, if you're looking for a device to use with Recon 3D, what's better, the iPhone or the iPad? Well, I usually tell people to look at the phone first. Most people are going to definitely need a phone as a device that they keep with them all the time. The iPad may not be something that you have in your back pocket. And so for that reason, the iPhone has an advantage. You could use it as your main phone. It's small. It's portable. You have it with you at all times, and it still gives you the ability to do the LiDAR scanning. And in terms of cost, the iPhone is going to cost less than the iPad Pro. Uh, uh, the iPad Pro starts to add up significantly because, you know, this is all you get when you buy it. So once you start needing a case, once you start needing the keyboard, if you want to get the pen, if you want to get additional accessories for this thing, they start to add up. And then, you know, I've got a case for it. It becomes bigger. It becomes bulkier. So unless you need a new, you know, laptop, something, something that you want to bring with you to do work on, and you're always going to have it with you. Um, or, you know, maybe it's a device that's going to be shared amongst people, then, you know, maybe this is something that you want to look into. But for me, I like the small form factor of the iPhone. Uh, I like the fact that it's portable. I use it as my main device. And I just find that it works really, really well, especially when I want to mount it on a pole and get it into some smaller areas. So the decision to buy an iPhone or an iPad is really about you, what you're going to be using it for. Do you already have a phone and you want a secondary device? Is that device going to be something small and portable you're going to keep in your pocket? Or is it going to be something larger, something that you want to use for emails, for taking notes, for taking uh, photos or editing things? Uh, then an iPad might make more sense, uh, even at the added cost. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you know where to reach me. Thank you. Bye-bye.